we have comedic legend in studio and speaking about Mark Luttering. Now he's been a part of the entertainment industry producing She and Magic for more than two decades and up until today he continues to leave his audiences in stitches. Well known for his diverse acts, please help me give a very warm welcome to Mr. Mark Luttering. Listen, I'm going to try not to have a fangirl moment. <laughs> you <laughs> can. You? I'm so happy to be here. I am starving, <laughs> which is why I accepted the invitation to be with you today. I hope we're going to taste a lot of liquor food, but it's good to see you. Good to be here. Well, hopefully we don't disappoint you in the kitchen and we prepare everything to your taste. But before we get into the cooking, I cannot sit down with a legend like you and not find out how the past two years have been. I mean, a lot of people in different industries had to like pivot, change, adjust yeah. um, with the lockdown, COVID-19 and, and, and. And someone like you, who's a comedian, your literal life is live performances. So you didn't really stop working. I didn't stop working. I, we went online immediately. Um, mm. Well, reluctantly I went kicking and screaming because it's weird to do comedy just to a cameraman. <laughs> and I don't know what your life is like, but when I first walked out, uh, my cameraman was Bubba Lass. <laughs> And um, not in the mood. I know that doesn't happen here because everyone's so professional. And not in the mood to, to listen to cops. So I walk out and there's the guy alone and I'm screaming like, I wear my sickness. And he's looking at me. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. are we okay? Are you talking to me? So, um, and then the first show, 19,000 people tuned wow. in. And it, it was a record for, for online comedy shows in our country. So, um, so, and I think after that experience, I kind of got used to it. Mm. Um, and, and so everything was okay. You know, I was doing really well in COVID. I suddenly got extra family members. People wanted to borrow money. I had to exit the WhatsApp family group. I was like, but I don't know this cousin. Oh. Um, so I can't sit here and complain to you and say, it's been hectic yeah. because I feel and I felt for and prayed for my other colleagues, the dancers, the actors, the yeah. singers, that um, still today people are struggling because of what happened over the past two years. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I, was, I, was happy, man, I managed to survive online. Yeah, I think that if you have a name like yours, South Africans just love you. It goes without saying, 19,000 viewers tuned in online. I think that's just mind blowing. When you get such a warm reception, what does that do for you, especially two decades in? Sure, um, it, it's humbling um, because you, you know, what I see it as, I also see it as, you know, you say two decades. It's been, an, it's, so that's been my investment in, mm. into comedy. And a lot of people don't like watching stuff online. So there was online fatigue, especially when it comes to stand up comedy. But I think people bought a lot of tickets out of loyalty. So I, my heart was, I was overwhelmed by that kind of response. How people just made a decision to sustain me and a whole lot of other artists who moved online. And that was kind of a celebration of, of the work that we've done. And also for South Africa, Mzanzi, laughter is the therapy. Yeah. That's what carries us through load shedding. <laughs> it carries us through looting. Um, and that's, you know, I talk about all these things in my shows. As South Africans, we survive through laughter. So now, Mark, this actually, it segues me quite seamlessly to my next question. We've seen you living large in Dubai. Yes. You had your comedy show there. God is good. All the time. God is good. But now what is so interesting for me is that South Africans have a very unique sense of humour. There's a, you already spoke about looting, load shedding. That's yeah. very South African and we all kind of get it. But now performing for an international audience, what's that like? You, you get very selective about the material because obviously when, when I'm doing uh, shows and I know there are international people in the audience, I try not, if I'm painting a picture about looting, I've got to paint the whole background story. Okay. Um, you know, load shedding, um, you know, you've got to paint the background story. So you tell the same story because funny is funny. But I think it's the context as to how you contextualize the story. That's, that's, the, that's the interesting part of me. That's when I'm trying to be matric with exemption and that's my <laughs> approach. The other side of me just thinks, you know what? The money's through already. I already have the EFT. And if they don't... <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if, they don't, if they don't like it. If they don't like it, I'm already fantasizing about what we're doing tomorrow. <laughs> Jupiter, no luck, my bro. Lunch I'm on Mark. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but we try to be cerebral <laughs> about, you know, who's in the audience. Mm. So you just tell the story differently. You speak slower. Apparently, we speak very fast as South Africans. Oh. So um, we just speak slower and, and, uh, and an amazing time in Dubai. Tell me about your new comedy show, Uncle Mark. 
I like to talk about what's going on in my life. That makes me very comfortable on stage. You know, if you stick to, to truth and honesty, not just on stage, but you see, I'm even giving you relationship advice. Now, if you are honest in your relationship, yeah. you never have to stumble and, you know, look for me. Don't keep secrets. Mm. So, um, so I, I talk about what's going on in my life and, um, and what's going on in South African lives. And what's happening now is, just over a year ago, I was just randomly walking around in a supermarket and somebody walked past me, a complete stranger, and said, I wear Uncle Mark. And I was like, when? <laughs> How am I being called Uncle, An uncle now? now? And uh, the day that we decided the show should be called Uncle Mark, I was out with friends of mine pub crawling and we were at a pub in Greenpoint and, uh, and my friends all said, you can send a drink over, you know, send a drink because we saw a cute person sitting at the bar. And, you know, after the second shooter, you go, yeah, I'll send a drink over, it's not a crime. And I sent over the drink and the cute person asked the barman who sent over the drink and the barman pointed at me in front of the whole bar and cute person turned around, saw me and said, Uncle Mark, my mommy had all your VHS tapes. I wanted to... <laughs> No, I wanted to take that drink back and send over like an Oras neat, you know, for the children. And With I just thought, not on the rocks. Yeah, and I just thought, the show's going to be called Uncle Mark. So in the show, uh, it's been going crazy around the country with the tour because young people and people who are older than 50 have been screaming because I just talk about the experience of when suddenly your young friends are calling you uncle. Uncle, oh my yeah. goodness. Well, I cannot wait to hear more about that. And I cannot hear... I cannot wait to hear more about the work that you're doing from the film to Auntie Mer. Listen. Whoa, lots to talk about. There's so much to talk about. But South Africa, don't forget to follow Mark on all social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Mark underscore Lottering. Or please do go visit his website at www.marklottering.com for more information on his upcoming shows. Don't forget to book your tickets to the Uncle Mark show. There's still a few tickets available for the remainder of May. Then Stay tuned because we're going to get down and dirty with Mark in the kitchen.